It is time for the 10th and final game of the day here on Match Day 5 of the MLS Next Pro season from Swangard Stadium in Burnley, British Columbia as Vancouver Whitecaps 2 hosts Minnesota United 2. Happy to have you with us tonight on MLSNextPro.com. I'm Joe Malpa. This is a matchup between two teams who are very happy with the way their season have begun. Minnesota United coming off their first loss of the year, but we're out to a very hot 3-0-0 start prior to that defeat last week against North Texas and Vancouver. Scorching start offensively. Two wins, a shootout win, and a loss in regulation to begin their slate. As we take a look at the standings coming into this one, Minnesota in third, Vancouver in sixth. Both of these teams hoping to get back on track after defeats last week. For Vancouver, their first regulation loss came in a 4-3 thriller at home against LA Galaxy 2. And Minnesota fell by one goal against North Texas Soccer Club. Very interesting starting 11 to get to tonight for Vancouver as they go through their warm-ups on a sopping wet field here in Burnaby. It has been pouring for the better part of the pregame. While the players were out there for the warm-up, you'll notice a very slow surface tonight in terms of the players moving around, but the ball will skip, and both coaches were very well aware of that. Ricardo Clark for Vancouver, Cameron Knowles for Minnesota, mentioned ahead of this one that they knew the elements would play a factor. And another thing playing a big factor in this one is the bye week for Vancouver Whitecaps in MLS because it allows them to drop some players down to get minutes. Most importantly, perhaps, Dabur Caicedo will make his MLS Next Pro debut. Outstanding player, young player for Whitecaps in MLS. Had five goals, five assists in the 2021 season. Didn't see as much time last year due to some injuries. 16 appearances, one goal, and three assists. And so far limited to just three appearances off the bench for 41 minutes in MLS. So a chance to get some minutes tonight for Whitecaps too. On the other side, Minnesota United, it's the opposite. Less of a first team presence, more of an academy presence, and more of their true players signed to United 2 who are getting the minutes tonight because a handful of players were called up for the first team for the weekend, and they have a U.S. Open Cup match on Tuesday against Detroit City FC that will likely feature a handful of the players they typically see. So it's a chance for Patrick Weah atop the lines to really stake his claim to a bigger role. And Diogo Pacheco leads the way as one of the league's leading scorers with three goals already this season. Mal Mahensi is the referee tonight. It is Minnesota in the baby blue from left to right. Vancouver in the white from right to left as the rain continues to pour down here at Swangard Stadium in Burnaby, British Columbia. Eight matches already in the books. LA and Austin currently in kicks from the mark and we're underway in the 10th and final game of the day here in match day five of the MLS Next Pro season. Happy to be with you this evening. From British Columbia, I'm Joe Malfa. We've seen some very interesting score lines across the league tonight. Goal scoring at a high. 3-3 between Philadelphia and Toronto. 3-2 Cincinnati over Kansas City. 4-3 Inter Miami over Huntsville. 2-2 Orlando NYCFC. Some gaudy score lines. And both of these teams have the firepower to replicate that. Especially Vancouver with the start they have enjoyed this season offensively. Disappointed to be coming off a 4-3 loss on their home ground in what was one of the more exciting games of the season. Prior to that, a 4-1 win on the road over North Texas. So seven goals scored in the last two games for Vancouver. On the other side for Minnesota. Opened the season with a clean sheet victory over Monarchs ever since then. They have not been able to keep a clean sheet, but the goal scorer has been there. Put in three against St. Louis in a victory. And then a 2-1 win over Galaxy before last week's 2-1 loss to North Texas. Nasovic goes all the way back to Isaac Bulmer in goal tonight. You're seeing as the ball is played around the park, just the trails of water kicking up from the surface. That'll be very difficult tonight. And no sign of that rain letting up either. Continues to just be a steady downpour. 
Thrown into Zaydan Bello. And taken away centrally by Vasco Fry. Here's JC Ngando. Out to Deber Caicedo. Caicedo, step over, end line, goes to the back post over everybody. You can see the mud patch in front of the goal of Fred Emmings. That'd be difficult for him to maneuver in his six yard box. First real threat for David Caicedo down the left wing, making his MLS Next Pro debut. 23 year old from Colombia. Capped at various youth levels for Colombia, not yet at the senior level. Here's Dasovic. Lukas Dasovic anchoring that back line. Played in four matches last season, more of a regular this season. A 19 year old from Vancouver. That's Karifa Yao. Another first teamer into the equation tonight for Vancouver with the bye week for the first team. And a free kick coming for Whitecaps FC2. Three players in this starting 11 for Vancouver who are considered first team guys. Caicedo, Yao, Hingando. Christian Greco Taylor, the left footed option over the free kick. He'll leave it for Caicedo. Whips it in toward the penalty spot, rising high to head it away. It was Juan Mosquera. And pardon me, Luik Masanvi. Doing the work back defensively. That's the left winger from Minnesota. Loic Masanvi signed back in November from the U19 Academy team. 15 appearances, 13 goals with the U19s last year. Masanvi with some of the players missing from Minnesota called up to the first team. Has a chance tonight to prove himself down that left wing. Making just his second start of the season. His fifth appearance overall, yet to score. Sent long again to Caicedo. And it skips out of play. Whether Vancouver or Portland or Seattle, if you're an MLS fan who's watched soccer in the Pacific Northwest over the years, you know this is just about what you can expect weather-wise. The difference is Vancouver plays its home matches indoors. Seattle and Portland play it on turf at the MLS level. But on a grass field here at the next pro level here in Burnaby. Well, nature's impacts felt a little bit more. Sloppy track to play a role tonight. And because of that, Cameron Knowles placed an emphasis this week on making sure they were secure with the ball on the back end. We're playing around the back line. We're trying to build out of the back. Does not want his Minnesota side to be hurt by any sloppiness, slipping. Where it passes because of the elements on the back end. Back for Yao. Looking through the lines for Gio Aguilar. And now Elaj Ba. Yao under some pressure from Weya. It's won by Masanvi. Luik Masanvi past his first man, still with it. Muscled off by Karifa Yao. Clearance off of Pacheco. Pushing it ahead, JC Ngando. Intercepted by Nick Richardson. Richardson has become a leader on this team for Minnesota. 
His first year as a professional. Coming out of the University of Maryland, making his third start tonight. Richardson won a national championship with Maryland. One of the best right backs in the country in 2022. First team all conference, third team all American. Minnesota very happy to bring him in. Yes, it's his first year as a pro, but brings experience as a 23 year old, helping out some of the younger guys. and now Richardson. You see Uche with it. Give it away here on the back end by Minnesota. And Gondo charging at the back line, puts it through on the turn, saved by Emmings. Denying Joseph Hansen, out for a corner. That's exactly what Cameron Rolls wanted this Minnesota team to avoid. Nearly succumbed to it. Emmings bails him out. Just got done talking about it. Dealing with this slower surface here, slipping there, Richardson. He had to come in for the ball because the grass slowed it down on the initial pass from Uche. Then he slipped. Worst of both worlds there. Not out of the woods yet. From the corner all the way out to Ngando. Plays it in, back post, header across frame, offside flag is up. <laughs> offside flag, there to help out Minnesota. And clear by a few yards, Gio Aguilar. Aguilar, the 24-year-old, transferred from Sacramento Republic, played in their academy, signed there in December. And then he was drafted 49th by Vancouver, so never ended up playing. There for Sacramento, came here with Vancouver. He was with this club last year, 19 starts, four goals, two assists, and now the guilty party committed the foul, Gio Aguilar. Sets up Minnesota with a set piece. Diogo Pacheco will take it. Pacheco. Came over this past season. Index Pro. Looking for more. To Bulmer, don't want to have your keeper playing like this on this surface right now. Gets it out of harm's way as the rain somehow picks up even more. Castedo. Ngando. And his pocket picked by Carlos Leatherman. Well done defensively by Leatherman. Senior Leatherman, Academy product with the U19s. 
I'm talking to Cameron Knowles ahead of this season. He mentioned that as the year would wear on, the stability of this group would come from below rather than above. Some teams around the league buoyed by the first team players who are in search of minutes, or first team guys who are tweeners and not getting those minutes. Just sticking around with the second team. A few here or there just rely heavily on the younger guys and they know that. But Minnesota has a good core of two team players signed and they believe the stability will still come from below. Guys like Leatherman coming up from the U-17s, the U-19s, who are ready to play at this level. And they really want to give those players as much of an opportunity as possible to succeed this year. Minnesota is still in its relative infancy in Major League Soccer. And with that being said, still looking to facilitate those pipelines of talent that the likes of North Texas and LA Galaxy 2 have enjoyed over the last few years from the academy through the two side, whether that's been in Next Pro or USL and up to the first team. Minnesota seems poised to finally cross that threshold and have so much of their first team come through the academy and the second team. Last year they started to see the foundation laid for that. And this year is when they want it to become more of their identity. And a good test tonight for some of those young players with the extra opportunity. With more players being called up to the first team this week. Opening the door for the likes of Masanvi and Leatherman. And here is Masanvi. Ahead to Wea. Patrick Wea end line. Struggling to get past Karifa Yao. And he earns the corner. And this is where Ricardo Clark wants to see improvement from Vancouver. Defensively undone by crosses a few times against LA Galaxy 2 in that 4 3 loss last week. Corner curled in, cleared away to Richardson. Not much he could do with it. On the turn, slipping was Uche. It's loose in the box and saved by Ballmer. At the end there, Bello slipped. Who didn't slip in the box in that exchange? Uche turns, fires here. He slips in front, trying to clear that. Dasovic slips, end line. You get the slide and the slip from Bello. That's the nature of the game tonight. Who can deal with the elements the best in their box defensively? Will likely come away with the victory. It's loose in front here. The opener for Wea and Minnesota on the road. First of the season for Wea in his first start. Careful in the celebration. Leatherman tried to leapfrog, send him to the ground. Just loose in front, pokes it with the outside of his right boot. Has played a total of 26 minutes and three appearances off the bench. Finally gets a start because of the absent players tonight. And Cameron Knowles said, way I came up to him in training this week, said, Coach, I'm ready, I want the minutes. You want him, you got him. And he made the most of him so far. His first of the year. Richardson slides into a clearance and it skips all the way past Stasovic. So once again, 
Vancouver undone defensively off oh, the set piece cross this time from the corner. One of the lessons that Ricardo Clark says he has learned through the first few games of his first stint as a head coach. Says he's just getting used to the league and the very different styles of play that you get from team to team. Some examples he used, Portland was methodical in the build. LAFC played a different way, posed some new challenges. North Texas, emphasis on set pieces. Last game against Galaxy at Gold Fest, open game, tried to find a way to slow it down. You just get so many new challenges in every game. And the biggest challenge of all is maintaining consistency in the four key phases that he laid out for his team, the four pillars he called them, in the technical, tactical, psychological, and physical areas. As Vancouver has a free kick coming. Ricardo Clark felt that they haven't had a game yet where they've hit on all four of those pillars. Maybe one day they'll have the physical and the tactical, but miss out on the psychological and tactical prowess. One day they'll have the tactical and the technical, miss out on the psychological and physical. And yet to put it all together, believes they're 60% of the way to showcasing their full potential. I've seen it in glimpses. But the consistency in all four phases is not yet there. From the free kick, Tordial headed across frame, loose in front and cleared by Richardson. It's going to be a lot of that as this game continues to grow older. Just put it in front, let the bodies literally fall where they may, and see where the ball ends up after that. What a mismatch that is. Leatherman tried to jump to head it away. Even jumping didn't get up to the height of Yao. Uche comes through to clear. Echo Taylor ranges forward to take the throw. And he'll do it again. Shot of handball from Joseph Hansen. Hansen made 17 appearances, five starts last season with three goals. Hasn't scored since last September. Making his first start of the season. Just 24 total minutes and three appearances off the bench for Hansen. His counterpart way up had a similar stat line. Just under 30 minutes and three appearances off the bench. He got his first start tonight, he got his first goal tonight. Hansen hoping for the same thing. Here in the driving rain at Swan Garden Stadium in Burnaby, British Columbia. Happy to have you with us tonight on MLSNextPro.com. Joe Malfa with you for the action. Played through to Ngando. Now David Caicedo. One on one with Leatherman. Caicedo threads it through. It's left behind there for Aguilar, end line. Aguilar skies the cross. Caicedo keeps it alive, end line, flashes it in front, and it's blocked. It just did trickle over the line for a corner. All the way back, Ngando, back post, header on, but wide from Yao. And that is out for a goal kick. Uche taking issue with the challenge on his teammate, Roy O'Driscoll. No foul was called, it's just out for a goal kick.
too many opportunities in terms of actual shots in the early going. One shot on target for Vancouver. Two shots, one on target for Minnesota. There have been some dangerous opportunities in part because of the weather. The body slipping in and around the box. Marco Taylor. Gets it back into play. All the way back to his center back, Dasovic. No center back to center back, Garifa Yao. And back again. Dasovic skips a couple of lines, gets it ahead to Hansen. Free kick on the way. Slip through, Caicedo, and Gondo curling for post and in! Levante Johnson there at the back door. We're level again at Swan Garden. Second goal of the season for Levante Johnson making his fourth start tonight. 24 year old out of Syracuse University. 11 goals, 25 starts for the national champions in 2022. It all started with him here. It barreled through. Eventually found him at the back post again. Not sure whether or not Nando is trying to curl that as a shot at the back post or if his intent was a pass. Either way, Johnson was alert, got there. Easy finish, level again. Got the sense that some of their early opportunities and threatening looks forward. And it would be very difficult to keep Vancouver off the score sheet tonight, especially with the way their last few games have gone. Among the league's leading scorers through their first four matches, 10 goals scored in their first four matches played. Puts them tied for second in the league. And they had another here. Part of the reason for that offensive success, according to Ricardo Clark, is just the way the playing principles mesh with the execution and talent of the players. What does he mean by that? He said that if we are sticking to our principles in the way we like to press high and win the ball high up the field, that's going to create more opportunities for us. And he just trusts the talent and the acumen to execute of his players to convert when you create that many chances, plain and simple. Pretty straightforward. It's maybe easier said than done. But game in, game out. They've stuck true to those principles. They've won the ball high up the field. They've generated opportunities. And that's where the talent can shine through of J.C. Gondo, of Levante Johnson, of a Cam Habibula, who's not in the starting 11 today. Question is for Vancouver, can the defensive side of things catch up to the offensive side of things? Pacheco from the free kick. Did well to score three goals at home last week, but they gave up four. Dasovic, Greco Taylor. And launched forward, but out of play for a goal kick. A 
last time they tried playing out of the back. Nick Richardson slipped. It led to a chance. All the way back now to Emmings. Richardson press closing in from Vancouver. He just chips it ahead. That's one back by the Whitecaps in the attacking half. 47 degrees right now. Pouring rain that is supposed to continue throughout the entirety of the game. And off the arm of Greco Taylor. Well, hour by hour, 94% chance of rain, 90% chance, and then 96% the rest of the evening. So there's a slim chance the rain stops, but we're talking anywhere between 10 and 4% of that. And the players can expect this and steady downpour all evening long. Hasn't let up for one moment through 28 minutes now. Ngando, great through ball to Caicedo. Flag stayed down. Neighbor Caicedo, back to the right foot. Caicedo saved by Emmings. 19-year-old goalkeeper, the first homegrown player in Minnesota's history. Won't be long before he is up with the first team. Great size, great instinct. And 52 saves in 13 games last year. Now the other way to Masanvi, saved by Balmer. Got the right hand on it and put it wide. End to end action now on a slick and sloppy track. Way up, able to slip it through. Misanvi, a great run off the back of his defender. Homer's momentum was carrying him to his left. His feet slipped out from under him. He still slapped it away with the right hand. Something tells me this game is not going to finish one to one. From the corner. Loose in front again. Ngando. Levante Johnson darting run in behind. Didn't time it right, ended up offside. It's Caicedo now. Caicedo. Ngando. Overlap there from Greco Taylor. Nobody making the trailing run at the back post. It falls all the way through for Aguilar. Looked ahead by Bob and all the way through for a goal kick. Both teams with three shots. Both teams with two shots on target. Possession leans 55-45 Vancouver's way. Some of the more dangerous looks have belonged to Vancouver despite having gone behind early. Battled back to tie it. 17 final third entries for Vancouver, just eight for Minnesota. Double the amount and then quadruple the amount of touches in the opposing 18. 12 touches in the 18 for Vancouver. Only three for Minnesota just shows you Vancouver is getting into those dangerous areas. It might be a matter of time before they add another. And this might be a yellow here. Battling from behind, Masco Fry takes down Wea. He didn't really make any effort for the ball. That's what Wea is trying to argue. Fry summoned back over by our referee, Maul Mahensi. Looks like he'll get away without a yellow. Very lucky. No attempt for the ball. Purely tactical foul. Pulling down way out from behind. We'll set up a good look at the free kick here for Minnesota. O'Driscoll. Pacheco stand over it. Diogo Pacheco has a wicked left foot. Would not put it past him to try and sneak this shot to the near post. Pacheco does just that, almost put it through the wall. It ricocheted off of both members of the wall, so it did its job in the end. Bomer set it up well. With three goals on the season, 
And the left foot he possesses. I had to imagine that was a possibility for Pacheco. Yeah, an alternate universe would have been very curious to see where that would have ended up. Looked like he struck it well. All the way back to Emmings. They want to have a word with his back line. Not to have a ball played back with that sort of pace on this slick of a surface, but he handled it well. And now skipping through the middle with it. It's Khan ahead to Pacheco. He slipped as he went to plant on that left foot. Completely wiped out underneath him. Took a big chunk of the grass with him. Leatherman back for Emmings. Minnesota looking to rebound after suffering their first loss of the season. Vancouver also suffered its first regulation loss of the season. Difference was Minnesota was a perfect 3-0-0 with nine points. Vancouver had picked up eight points. Two regulation wins, one shootout win. Minnesota entered this match in third place. Vancouver in sixth. Devontae Johnson knows off the ball. I won Mosquera. And a late whistle back behind the play from Moma Hensi. Talk to Cameron Knowles about that 3-0-0 start. And he wanted to make sure that his team remained grounded. So that when we reflect on matches the day after games, we talk more about the performance than about the result. Point the two an example of his time coaching at Portland Timbers 2 when he was in USL Championship, where they had lost 10 matches in a row. But there were matches in there that he walked away from pleased when they evaluated it. And then in the midst of that losing streak and that stretch of struggling, he pulled off a couple of big upsets against Reno and Sacramento, who were top dogs in the Western Conference at the time. And he walked away from those games not feeling good. Yes, they pulled out the result, but at the end of the day, they didn't necessarily deserve to win. So you have to find a way to dissect it all, evaluate it properly. As the yellow card is issued here to Rory O'Driscoll. The phrase Cameron Knowles used is if it's a positive outcome, doesn't necessarily mean the process was good. There's that yellow to O'Driscoll. Sometimes a positive outcome means you got lucky. Not necessarily a positive process. They've had that honest self-reflection after their early wins and there are things that they believe could be better. And even the loss last week against North Texas, there were things that he felt were good. Especially in the early going of the season where it's too soon to tell necessarily who's a contender, who is not here. In the Western Conference, so much of the emphasis just placed on the performances. No real look yet at the standings, how everybody's doing. Just true introspective self-reflection to make sure they can be the best versions of themselves. With each passing week, Minnesota. Poked ahead to Pacheco, has runners centrally and at the back post. Back to his preferred left foot here. Side swipe at the shot. Goes wide for Malik Jesse Khan. Well read by O'Driscoll. It's Khan again. All the way across for Richardson. Khan slipped as he turned around to look upfield. Levante Johnson with it, nudge from behind. Mosquera call for the foul.
Free kick served up by Vancouver. It falls perfectly for Dasovic, and he makes it too. Send it forward, sometimes good things happen. Unmarked. Two unanswered for the Whitecaps after they conceded first. And their first lead of the night. Just a hopeful ball forward from near midfield. Clearing header away from Richardson. Was right out of the right foot of Dasovic. Look what I found. A go ahead goal. Started four games last season, Dasovic. This year has appeared on the back line for three starts, and that is his first MLS Next Pro goal. How will Minnesota respond? It's nice to get the opening goal, especially on the road, but you had to know Vancouver would roar back. Such a heavy first team presence in their starting 11 tonight because the first team had a bye week in MLS. The exact opposite for Minnesota, where they not only didn't have that first team presence, but they had a couple more of their regulars their upper tier players plucked from them to be with the first team this weekend and then in US Open Cup on Tuesday as they travel to Detroit. Mosquera, five to play here in half number one. Again, slipping O'Driscoll. Here's where the home field advantage kicks in. Imagine the players on Vancouver know exactly which spikes to use on a night like this. Sure, we've seen a couple of Vancouver players slipping here and there, but drastically fewer than what we've seen from Minnesota. Nice touch by Leatherman. Flicked on by way on to Pacheco. Has a runner centrally looking to get it to Khan. Intercepted on the back end by Fry. Now it's way up. Driving at the back line. And it is out for a corner for Minnesota. Scored on a corner in the early stages of this match. Back in the 16th minute, it was way up. Pacheco, Masanvi tried to redirect. Didn't get enough on it to steer it centrally where all his teammates were located. All the way back for Emmings. Minnesota hasn't seen as many opportunities on the attack as Vancouver over the last stretch of play, last 10 minutes. And every time Vancouver arranges forward with the likes of Caicedo and JC Ngando leading the charge. Two first-teamers here to get minutes today. 
It just seems to be a lethality and a purpose to it. You can see every breath being taken by the players. 46 degrees, windy, driving rain. See exactly why the first team plays indoors up in this neck of the woods in British Columbia. Tonight is exhibits A through Z in that regard. Free kick just along the sideline for Minnesota. O'Driscoll well, will supply the service. 45th minute. O'Driscoll well, toward the penalty spot. It drops for a way up and grabbed by Palmer. Barrels through Masanvi. We got up and exchanged some words with Yarifa Yao. Long toss ahead from Bulmer, right under the foot of Elijah Bob, but he gives it away. Good luck to the kit managers at halftime. Get some fresh, dry socks. If you got a backup jersey for some of the more dirty ones, Nick Richardson no longer looks uniform to his teammates, the baby blue. It's half baby blue, half brown. One minute tacked on to the end of this first half. Nudge in the back from Dasovic, a late decision for the foul call. But it comes nonetheless. Dasovic gave Vancouver the two to one lead. Well, his error here in conceding this foul in the closing seconds lead to an equalizer. He giveth, will he also taketh. O'Driscoll, Pacheco stand over it. We've seen Pacheco. He's just about every set piece in and around the 18. O'Driscoll is handled almost from further away near midfield. Three goals on the season for Pacheco. He seems poised to strike this. We already saw him strike one from an odd angle. Hoping to sneak it at the near post past Isaac Ballmer. Especially with the slick surface we have here. If he thinks he could get it around the wall, skip it off the grass. It is Pacheco deflected off the wall and in! A favorable bounce for Minnesota and we're level on the stroke at halftime. There is the halftime whistle. Fourth of the year for Pacheco. Would have been difficult enough to change direction on a dry night for Isaac Palmer, but no chance with that surface. Did his best to get back to that ball on the mud patch in the middle of the goal frame. Pacheco would tell his grandkids decades from now that he put that top corner. Not the case, but it counts all the same. And we're level at the half here at Swan Garden. In the final game of match day five here this weekend in MLS Next Pro. And we saw some action on Friday night as well. That's where it all started. 
in what has been a very busy and fun match week. Goals galore all around. We have four in this first half. We've seen a couple matches end for two, for three earlier tonight. This one seems to be headed on that same trajectory the week after Vancouver lost 4-3 on this field, hoping it's a different outcome tonight. And on Friday night, everything began when New England took on Red Bull 2. We had two matches finish with 1-0 victories for the roadside. As match day five kicked off in New England, when in the 72nd minute, Revs 2, Santiago Suarez committed a foul in the box against Red Bull 2, which led to the penalty for Oladayo Thomas. That's two straight 1-0 wins for Red Bulls 2. That jumped them all the way to fourth in the East, entering Sunday. And uh, if you venture out west, you'll find the match between Real Monarchs and North Texas SC. Appeared to be headed to a shootout, but at 90 plus five, Moses Nyman for 23 yards on the free kick, earned all three points for Monarchs. Both of their wins have been one nil road results, and they return home to face Portland next Sunday. Then we had an odd Saturday night game that popped up this week in match day five. Atlanta's Nick Firmino scored a goal off of a turnover on the press in the 10th minute, and then he capped off his strong night with another in the late stages. Firmino with this organization now, a couple of years running. One of their standouts in USL Championship last year, and then a tap in in the 84th minute to complete his brace as they took down Chicago Fire 2 in Kennesaw. And Atlanta jumped three spots in the Eastern Conference table with that result. Well, that's how we got things going the first couple of matches on match day five. Now let's take a look back at the best of what we saw for match day four in this week's installment of the Spotlight. One month into the MLS Next Pro season, and the spotlight seems to be getting even brighter. Here we round up all the players who stood out following Match Day 4. Starting with the coveted MLS Next rising star of Match Day 4, Philadelphia Union 2's David Vasquez. The 17-year-old's 81st minute goal not only gave Union 2 their first win of the season, but it also made history in the process. Vasquez will go down in the record books for scoring the thousandth goal in MLS Next Pro regular season history. The Philadelphia Academy product already made an impact with the U.S. men's youth national team and is certainly poised to have a similar impact on Union 2 this season. The MLS Next Pro Player of the Week for Match Day 4 is a player who helped his team score four. LA Galaxy 2's Aaron Bibu put on a hat trick performance in their win over a top 10 Whitecaps FC2 team. His three goal showing was the first of the season and the first since August 7th of last year by Schneider Borgeland of Inter Miami FC2. The former hat trick star is now a first team contracted player. And on a week where there were plenty of goals to choose from, the best goal of match day four goes to Sporting Kansas City 2's Lucas Rosa. He beat out his teammate Sebastian Cruz with a strike from well beyond the 18-yard box that sailed past 10 Real Monarchs defenders and their keeper. His 57% share of the poll marks the highest percentage of the best goal of match day votes to date. The team of Match Day 4 honor goes to a very deserving Austin FC2 team. A team who played two games in five days and posted two clean sheets and five goals. The Verdos continued their excellent MLS Next Pro season debut by showing strength on both sides. Damian Loss and the defense have only allowed three goals on the season and offensively, Verdos can score and do so quickly. They managed three goals in five minutes against North Texas this week and two in 22 versus St. Louis. Their three-game win streak has rocketed them to the top of the Western Conference standings. Congrats to all of our players who made it in the spotlight this week. We'll see you right back here for Who Stood Out following Match Day 5. Good luck picking out who and what stood out from match day five. Goals galore, terrific performances galore. We've taken a look at the present, the past, now the future. Here's what match day six looks like. It begins on Friday with this Minnesota team 
taking on Austin, I'll tell you what, if Minnesota is able to rally and win this thing, they will be just two points back of Austin. It'll be first place versus third place, and a chance for Minnesota to leapfrog into first in the Western Conference, depending on how things play out tonight. And from there, a couple other matchups that stick out. We'll see Atlanta against Philadelphia in the East, reigning champions, Columbus Crew 2 against Inter-Miami 2 to kick things off on Sunday. And it all wraps up in the West with Tacoma and LA Galaxy 2, a pair of teams who have shown some bright spots this year. Tacoma more so than LA. Tacoma up, up in fifth place right now. The first half highlights and stats are coming up in just a few moments. But first, let's meet one of the top players to watch in MLS Next Pro, Colorado Rapids 2's Daniel Chacon, also international with Costa Rica. Hola, ¿qué tal? Bienvenidos a la segunda temporada de MLS Next Pro. Soy Samara Pérez. El día de hoy nos acompaña un seleccionado nacional de Costa Rica y uno de los jugadores a seguir en esta temporada de MLS Next Pro. Él es Daniel Chacón de Colorado Rapids 2. Daniel, bienvenido y muchas gracias por estar con nosotros el día de hoy. Bueno, muchas gracias a ustedes por, por el espacio y bueno, feliz de estar compartiendo acá un rato con, con ustedes para que la gente también conozca un poco más de, de quién soy y, y bueno, un poco de, de mi vida. Claro, ya que mencionas eso, queremos conocer más sobre ti. Sabemos que llegar a ser un futbolista profesional no es nada fácil. ¿Cuáles han sido algunos de los retos a los que te has enfrentado y que has podido superar en este camino? Bueno, creo que al principio de mi carrera, en la primera división de Costa Rica, no, no tuve mucha regularidad. Eh, pasó toda una temporada que solo jugué un partido y después de esa temporada pasé un año completo sin jugar. Entonces fue una prueba de, de paciencia, de perseverancia, de, de trabajo, que creo que, que ha sido como mi principal virtud, más allá de, de cualquier argumento futbolístico. Entonces creo que la paciencia y, y pues la resiliencia para, para poder sobreponerse de momentos complicados creo que ha marcado mucho parte de mi carrera. Daniel, formaste parte de la Selección Nacional de Costa Rica. ¿Cómo te sentiste cuando recibiste esa convocatoria? Bueno, muy feliz. Había tenido la oportunidad de compartir con, con la selección, pero no en convocatorias oficiales hasta que llegó la, me parece que la penúltima fecha eliminatoria para, para el Mundial de Qatar, que tuve la oportunidad de, de ya estar con la selección y debutar en, en el Estadio Azteca contra México. Creo que para mí y para prácticamente cualquier jugador, creo que el orgullo más grande que existe es ponerse la, la camisa de la selección y, y poder, poder jugar partidos de, de ese nivel. ¿Y cómo ha sido tu experiencia con la selección nacional de tu país? Creo que hasta el momento todo ha sido muy positivo. Eh, he tenido, como le digo, la, la experiencia, la oportunidad de, de jugar partidos muy importantes, de, de mucho nivel, eh, en contra de, de muy grandes jugadores, ya sea contra México, también tuve la oportunidad de jugar contra Canadá en, en las eliminatorias, contra Estados Unidos. Entonces creo que esto te da una experiencia y te da una confianza diferente para, para afrontar los, los nuevos retos que vienen en su carrera con con más seguridad y con, con más optimismo, habiéndose probado uno a estos, a estos niveles. Daniel, casi 40 jugadores de MLS Next Pro han firmado un contrato con un equipo de Major League Soccer. Cuando escuchas esto, ¿cómo te motiva para jugar con Rapids 2? Bueno, creo que esa es la principal, eh, o mi principal enfoque de estar acá. Creo que el paso acá por Colorado Rapids 2, creo que... Espero que sea de mucho provecho, de, de mucho aprendizaje, pero también ojalá tener la aspiración de salir de acá lo, lo más rápido posible y aspirar siempre a lo más alto. Creo que, que sería un error siempre estar conformándose con, con el lugar donde usted está y creo que siempre es, es bueno y habla bien de usted el, el querer más. Entonces me lo tomo con, con mucho positivismo el paso por acá, pero claramente teniendo en mente el, el, un contrato con el primer equipo y poder competir en MLS. Y por último, ¿qué es lo que más esperas de tu primera temporada con tu equipo en MLS Next Pro? 
Bueno, creo que en mi primera temporada no solo se resume a lo futbolístico, es mi primera vez eh, lejos de, de mi país en una nueva experiencia, entonces creo que eso me va a ayudar, me, me va a ayudar mucho para madurar como persona, como, como jugador y claramente estar en un ambiente nuevo compitiendo este, a un nivel o de una forma diferente a la que lo hacía y me parece que, que el equipo está muy bien, que queremos pelear por, por todo lo que se pueda, ojalá pues quedar campeones, ¿por qué no? O sea, creo que siempre hay que, que optar por, por lo más alto y, y bueno, yo estoy muy, muy emocionado por, por esta temporada que, que está empezando. Y nosotros emocionados con tenerte. Daniel, te deseamos todo el éxito en tu primera temporada. Muchas gracias por platicar con nosotros. No, gracias a ustedes por el tiempo. Y gracias a todos por sintonizar. Soy Samara Pérez. Nos vemos en la próxima. Chacón, one of the bright stars of this league, already experience in the World Cup with Costa Rica this past November. And he is hoping that Colorado can hang on to its spot in the second place right now in the Western Conference. Minnesota, a couple points behind them, hoping to inch a bit closer as they did at the end of the first half, 2-2 through 45. Let's take a look at highlights now from half number one between Vancouver and Minnesota, of which there were many, mostly weather-induced. Watch out there. Nick Richardson caught on the banana peel as he stumbles and led to the early opportunity here for Vancouver. Big save by Emmings. And it was just chance after chance, end to end. There were 14 total shots, eight shots on target in that first half with those four goals. Fell here in front for an opportunity that led to a corner. And then off this corner, Pacheco plays it in, not it down, and Weato pokes it past Ballmer. Amazing that Weato was able to generate that level of power on that strike. Look here, he's caught wrong footed, just toe pokes it and blasts it past Ballmer. Celebration, eh, left a little to be desired. From the free kick then, as they're looking to get back in the game, Vancouver flashes across the box and cleared by Richardson. As the half wore on, opportunity began with Levante Johnson, got it through to Ngando. Back post, Johnson, who started the motion, finishes it, 24th minute. That was a response eight minutes after way out, made it 1-0. So all knotted up at one. And that's where the back and forth and back and forth ensued. Slipped through to Masanvi. Big save by Bulmer, sticking out the right hand as he was falling away. And then in the 38th minute, he had this, Stasovic. It was headed away by Richardson, who pounds the mud after he saw the end result. Couldn't generate enough power on it to knock it away. Dasovic found his first goal. But then it was Dasovic with that lazy foul, 15 seconds to half time. He set up the free kick, deflected off the wall, past Bomer and in to make it two to two. Well, that's where we ended after 45 minutes. Four goals, but right down the middle as we take a look at the stats. Here in the first half, as I mentioned, 14 total shots. Nine of those for Minnesota. Four shots on target each possession, just about down the middle. Nothing really separating these teams. They both had their positive spells of play. And that's where we stand. Four to four through 45 minutes. Could not ask for a better conclusion so far to match day five of the 2023 MLS Next Pro season. So two games on Friday, a game yesterday. And this is the last of 10 today. Players are back out there to begin half number two. It is Vancouver in the white from left to right. Minnesota in the blue from right to left. Moma Hensi is in that neon green with the whistle to get us going here in half number two through the rain at Swangard Stadium in Burnaby, British Columbia. Happy to have you along tonight on MLSNextPro.com. I'm Joe Malfa. Rain has just been constant. Curious to see if this Minnesota team is caught slipping as much in the second half as they were in the first. Not easy for anybody to keep their footing on this surface, but it was evident that Vancouver did a better job of that in the first half. More familiar with the grounds. And we're underway now in half number two.
Rain is forecast to continue the entirety of the match. Hopefully the players were able to get a fresh change of socks, fresh kits, a whole lot. And by the looks of it, they were wise enough to have a spare change of clothes because as you look around some of the Minnesota players specifically, jerseys are more blue than brown here to begin this second half. O'Driscoll nods it down. Bello back for O'Driscoll. Cuts it underneath. O'Driscoll slips it through to Wea, but it runs by. Skips all the way through for Uche. Back to Emmings under fire, just cleared it. Philadelphia and Toronto, a six goal affair earlier today. 3-3, Philadelphia took it on kicks from the mark. Cincinnati, Kansas City, five goal affair that Cincinnati won three to two. Inter-Miami, Huntsville, seven goal affair that Inter-Miami won four to three. Very high scoring day around the league. And this one is knocking on the door of joining that group. Vancouver was part of a seven goal affair last week. They lost 4-3 on this field against LA Galaxy 2. Uche keeps it in. Hansen with it now. And that's out for a Vancouver corner. Good thing is, if there's a silver lining in this weather, it's not very windy. See the corner flags have been mostly still all night long. Low driven corner on the slick surface. Cleared away by Uche. Ngando pushes it back. And Ba further back for Balmer. Bulmer, long, it skips to Caicedo. He read that so well off the bounce. It looked like he was overrunning it, but the slick surface, it bounced right to his path now, a drive from outside the box. It is sent sailing into the night. By Christian Greco-Taylor. Uche, back for Emmings. Much slower pace to begin this second half. What we saw as things opened up in the first half. Eventually, I think we'll get there with these two teams. Ngando. Fry. Greco Taylor gives it away. Nick Richardson clipping it over the top. Aguilar finds Johnson, first goal scorer of the day for Vancouver. Aguilar. Mosqueda turns it outside, almost conceded the corner. Gives it up instead to Elijah Ba. Cutting inside, Ba goes down, penalty. All started with Mosqueda's error. His touch took it too wide. As he tried to save it from conceding the corner, he played it right to Elijah Bob, right here. Would have been better off in hindsight conceding that corner. Cuts inside. There's the contact. Nick Richardson caught the shoelaces of Ba on his way through. And Daber Caicedo will take the penalty. 
His first ever MLS Next Pro appearance. He's been limited to three appearances in MLS this season. Five goals, five assists two seasons ago for the Whitecaps. So his role diminished a bit last year. First team has a bye week. He needs some minutes. Now he has a chance to score from 12 yards out. Blast it through. Vancouver back on top. Full team celebration for the first team are spending the night with the second team. All started again with this foul drawn by Elaj Ba. No doubt about it, a penalty. And then Caicedo clearing the net of all the water droplets. His first ever MLS Next Pro goal in his first appearance. And Vancouver has its second lead of the game. Caicedo. Foul goes against Ngando. Uche, see if that goal opens things right back up here in this second half. After a slow start in the first few minutes, it's Johnson, and Mosqueda got the ball. So Driscoll looking long, Weya settles it. Weya battling Ba, and Elijah Ba wins it clean. Clears it though up the middle, gives it away, ill-advised. Aguilar comes through with it from Asco Fry. Ngando made the run out wide, Caicedo keeps it. Fresh off the penalty goal, feeds Johnson. Levante Johnson it was just over the line for a goal kick. Fred Hemmings had a penalty save already this season against St. Louis. No way you can stop. Next strike from Caicedo. About chest high it would have been on Hemmings. With power. Only way Hemmings could have had a dream about saving that as if he had his feet firmly planted on the ground and did not pick a side. Even then, it might have taken his hands with it. Caicedo, flag stayed down. Most of the dismay of the back line of Minnesota, up the head to J.C. Ngando, cutting in, Gondo over the bar. And Cooper has come out of the locker room, a team not messing around. After a 4-3 home loss last week, into the break at 2-2. Two two. After the free kick goal by Pacheco ended that first half. Goal on the penalty in search of more. Hoping to get back to their winning ways. No regulation losses in the first three games for Vancouver. Two wins. And then a loss on kicks from the mark. Pardon me, a win on kicks from the mark. To the end line, Johnson clips it back post. And a cross frame by Leatherman out for a corner. Both of these teams coming off their first regulation losses of the season. Both have responded well in their own ways. Positives to glean from the first 
55 minutes for both of these teams. A goal fest and a slop fest on this field in this weather. Caicedo flipped ahead. O'Driscoll with it. Only player so far on the field with a yellow card, Rory O'Driscoll. Way up. Back for Ballmer. The Sanvi. Good slide put in by Aguilar. Back for Luis Masanvi. Now Khan. That ball was just over the line throw in for Minnesota. After two games in a row at home, Whitecaps will go on the road next week to St. Louis. Put wide by Bello. That's how they will end the month of April next Sunday. Minnesota, on the other hand, has that quicker turnaround, as we mentioned at halftime. Friday night on the road against Austin, who sit currently atop the Western Conference here at MLS Next Pro. Johnson, goal already tonight. Out to Aguilar. Masco Fry over the top to Caicedo, brings it down. Caicedo juggles through, goes down, flopping like a fish on the wet surface, but no call made. Up the right side, Minnesota, top of the area. It's Bello with the shot blocked. Back for Khan. Good save by Bomer. Not easy to read the skip off the surface. Had his chest over the top of it to keep it out. Any shot like that that skips off of the grass. Have to be wary of it. Just comes with such pace. Almost trapped that. The cross sports for a moment like a first baseman snaring it at first base off of a short hop. Didn't give that a chance to skip by him. Approaching the hour mark. 3-2 lead for Vancouver. And if you've learned anything from the first 58 minutes, very unlikely that this finishes three to two. Chances galore for both of these teams. Strong challenge to win it from Dasovic, who has a goal tonight, but also committed senselessly the foul that led to the free kick for Pacheco for Minnesota to tie it. Another stroke at halftime. Johnson through. Caicedo latches onto it. Faber Caicedo saved by Emming strictly toward the line. But the mud has his back. It just stops its tracks. Scored less than 10 minutes ago for the penalty spot. Fred Emmings is really just establishing himself as one of the top goalkeepers in all of MLS Next Pro. Still just a teenager. Such a bright future ahead. They were not afraid to give him the minutes last season. At the ripe age of 18, now 19. Aguilar. It's the return ball from Johnson. And that will go all the way out for a Vancouver corner. Here at Swan Garden Stadium, hour gone, half hour to go. Happy to be with you tonight from Burnaby, British Columbia, Joe Malfa.
here on MLSNextPro.com as we wrap up match day five of the 2023 MLS Next Pro season. Tenth and final game of the day. Thirteenth and final game of the weekend. All teams looking to rebound from their first regulation losses of the season. Vancouver looking to go ahead by two. Johnson is possessed by O'Driscoll. Neither team has ever led by two goals in this game. Minnesota opened the scoring. Vancouver responded with two to take a two to one lead. Minnesota tied it on the last kick of the first half. And then from the penalty spot, Vancouver took the lead here in the second half. Vancouver's torrent pace offensively, by the way, continues. They came into this one with 10 goals on the season. Tied for the second highest total of MLS Next Pro. They're at three and counting today. That will take them up to 13 goals scored. And that will be two goals clear of the next highest total. Everything clicking right now for Ricardo Clark's team offensively. It's the defensive end they have to clean up. Despite their three goals, last week they gave up four and lost. Week prior, four to one win over North Texas. So in the last three games alone, and again, this one far from over, they have 10 goals. As mentioned in the first half, Ricardo Clark chalks that up to the intersection of their talent. Chance here for Aguilar pulls it wide. And it did take a deflection. It's the intersection of the talent execution and the principled approach of this Vancouver attack. They stick true to what they are asked to do from the coaching staff in terms of the press and winning the ball high up the field. And with the talent they possess, the way they execute, you find that quantity of the chances because of your principled approach are more often than not going to turn in the goals. Casado near post, diving header away. Out for a rocket that almost found the bottom corner from Ngando. Never got more than two inches off the ground. But nearly sought out the bottom corner. Masanvi turns the corner, has Weah streaking back post. The ball left something to be desired. Now Caicedo on the run. Avery Caicedo slows it down past Leatherman. Ngando tries it again. This one deflected out for a corner. Carifi out. Shown a yellow back behind the plate. Caicedo from the corner, Dasovic tried to flick on. Minnesota gets it clear only as far as J.C. Ngando. Caicedo again. Pacheco defends it well. When will these coaches dip into the benches? 
65 minutes in, no sign of substitutions yet. Nice turn again by Masanvi. Doing well off the dribble here in the second half where the opportunities have been there. O'Driscoll switches it out wide to Pacheco. Diogo Pacheco in the area. Dasovic clears off of Pacheco. And now out for a throw. Nervous moment there for Vancouver as that ricochet back into the path of the light blue jerseys. The rain hasn't let up at any point tonight. It's been raining so hard that I don't know if you could actually tell if it's picked up and gotten harder at any point, but it definitely hasn't gotten softer, that's for sure. O'Driscoll sends it up into the clouds. And out for a goal kick. Stasovic. Aguilar plays the way he's facing back to Ballmer. On this surface, I don't know if you want to be playing the ball around the back to your keeper with a one goal lead. If they get it out across midfield. Elijah Bob drew the penalty that led to the third goal. Finds Caicedo. Faber Caicedo put it wide. Did not have enough bend on it. Emmings was worried about it. Harmlessly wide in the end. Minnesota readying its first change of the match. Keith Romanshin. Into the match for Zidane Bello. He's Romans in second appearance. Here's Johnson centering it now for a goal kick. Romanshin has one start on the season. Seventeen-year-old from St. Paul, Minnesota. Gando or Caicedo. Aber Caicedo turns past Leatherman, back to his right foot, crosses it to Johnson, settles, finishes! Brilliant all around. Vancouver up by two. It's a brace for Levante Johnson. Every bit of this was magic for the Whitecaps. The move from Caicedo to leave Letterman behind. The cross, that first touch, and the finish under pressure. Bonus points for the celebration as well. 
Up until now, neither team in this goal fest had led by more than one goal. Vancouver changes that. As a team, their 14th goal here in match day five. And it's three better than the next closest team in the league right now. Offensively a juggernaut. Ricardo Clark spoke about the four pillars that will lead this team to success and wanting to see more consistency in all four areas. Those four being technical, tactical, psychological, and physical. There might be some areas where he could ask for more improvement tonight. A couple of lapses, particularly defensively. They are clicking on all four pillars offensively once again. Scoring four goals. On the heels of scoring three against LA Galaxy and four the game before that against North Texas. 11 goals in three games. That alone would be tops in MLS Next Pro. Before this game started, a couple of teams were tied with 11 goals for most in the league. You can completely discount Vancouver's first two games of the season. And just the last three games alone would be enough for first place in the league in goals scored. And by the way, 20 minutes to go. They're not done yet. Neither is Minnesota trying to find a way back into this game now. In danger of dropping their second in a row in regulation after winning each of their first three in regulation and taking a maximum nine points. There are no more truly perfect teams after Colorado Rapids 2 lost in a shootout today. Entering the match day, they were the lone team to have picked up maximum points in the matches they had played so far. There are still three teams who have not lost a match in regulation. Crown Legacy, the lone team to do that in the East. Austin and Colorado, the two teams to do that in the West. And there are no truly undefeated teams anymore because those three teams without a regulation loss, all three lost their shootouts. Played in, flicked on, Masanvi tries to scissor kick out for a goal kick. Credit for trying. Would have been difficult with the ball at that height. And Yorifi out. Coming in on him. That'll be it tonight for David Caicedo. First ever next pro appearance. Future player for the MLS side. Appeared this year in CONCACAF Champions League. With the first team having a bye. Don't think it'd be a good time to get him some minutes. Get him some confidence. Only three appearances this season off the bench in MLS. For less than 45 minutes. Hasn't even played the equivalent of a half. And he made his presence felt tonight. His penalty kick goal in the 51st minute. Right now would go down as the game winning goal. Yellow card to Gio Aguilar. It's Antoine Couplin who came into the match for Caicedo. Pacheco already with a free kick goal to his name tonight. This is a bit further out. On the borderline of where you'd see a player strike one from. Let's see how confident he feels. He drives it into the wall. Here's Khan. O'Driscoll lost it. 
Quarter of an hour remains. They got a rainy Swan Guard Stadium. Two goal lead for Vancouver to see over the finish line. Lost four to three on this field last week. And they get back on track. They have done just that so far. And despite conceding twice, they still might feel okay about their defensive showing tonight. Considering the weather conditions. First goal was scored off a loose ball, off a corner kick with body slipping around. Second goal was a free kick from distance that deflected off the wall. And past Balmer, who already started working in one direction, ball came the other way. I think he could have really done about it. Could they have been better in the build-up to those set pieces and not conceded them? Of course, but two fluky goals in their own right. Khan centering it here to Masanvi. Leatherman for Pacheco. A foul from behind goes against Ngando. Way out holding up the play. He's taken down. Another free kick coming. This one from better territory for Minnesota. And the yellow is given to Vasco Fry. This is almost the same exact spot Pacheco scored from with the ricochet off the wall in the first half, except at the other end of the field. Was his fourth goal of the season. He was given credit for it despite the deflection. There was going to be a shot on target, so no own goal goes down on Pacheco's tally. Continues to pour. And Burnaby. And it won't be Pacheco on this free kick. It'll be Rory O'Driscoll. O'Driscoll puts it wide. Surprised to see the captain Pacheco and team's leading scorer with four goals. Rory has a free kick goal tonight. Leaving that one for O'Driscoll. Jay Herdman will enter for Levante Johnson. <laughs> Levante Johnson leaves this game with a brace. Pacheco brings it down, but he did so with his arm. Here is Hansen. He's quietly done a lot of the hard, dirty work atop the line tonight for Vancouver. His second appearance this season. Probably first start. Fourth appearance. He hasn't seen a lot of time on the year, just 24 minutes coming in.
Over the top to Elijah Ba, who drew the penalty. That led to the go-ahead goal for Caicedo that would currently go down as the winning goal. Brilliant bit of interplay here, working in centrally. And Coover's feeling it now offensively. Kuplin could have done better with it in the end. Free kick for Minnesota. Copeland is possessed by Khan. And it was last off of the Minnesota midfielder. This is going to be an interesting game to digest for Cameron Knowles, going back to the point made earlier about how they holistically look at each matchup. Don't read too much into the result when evaluating. There are plenty of positives to take from tonight. And when you evaluate all the mitigating circumstances, the weather, the fact that Vancouver had three first-teamers in with their first team on a bye week, the fact that Minnesota went the opposite way and lost their first-team guys and some of their key second-team guys and had to go younger tonight because of their first-team schedule as Masanvi plays it into the arms of Bomer. With that Open Cup game ahead on Tuesday. So not necessarily a level playing field. And you factor in the weather. But at the end of the day, you want to challenge your U-17s and U-19s that come up to a game like this tonight. Can they rise to the occasion? Can some of your backups who have been battling to crack the 11 rise to the occasion? Make the case for more minutes? One thing is you have to weigh on evaluating this. There were good moments, they were bad. As far as the goals they've conceded, a couple of them he'll be unhappy with. The two that were scored by Levante Johnson. Vancouver just picked them apart in the buildup. And there was the penalty for Caicedo. That's its own thing. And then Dasovic. Off the free kick, a header away by Nick Richardson. Just fell right for the Vancouver defender. And he hit it home first time. Maybe more forgiving of the way those two goals were conceded, the penalty and the free kick, but two goals by Johnson. Those might not sit well with Cameron Knowles. That back line cut like a hot knife through butter on those two times. Down the field, another chance here to make it five. Exclamation point for the Whitecaps. That ball skips off this surface in these conditions. Emmings made a lunge for it. Jay Herdman gets the goal. Fourth appearance of the season, his first goal. Herdman had two goals last season. Has been in this club's academy since he was 12 years old. Son of Canadian men's national team head coach John Herdman. Five minutes to play. This one well in hand now for Vancouver. Getting back on track after last week's loss against Galaxy. 
in the live table. They will vault all the way into third place. When the night began, it was Minnesota in third place. At the end of the night, it will be Vancouver sitting in third on 11 points and two points clear of their opponent tonight. Up to 15 goals scored in five matches, the Vancouver Whitecaps. Here's Khan to get one back for Minnesota. Gobbled up by Bulmer. Next up for Vancouver, a road trip to St. Louis City 2. The matchup of West versus one of the West's best, excuse me. In third place against one of the West's worst. 13th place, St. Louis so far really struggling to get off the mark this season. Yet to win a game in regulation. They do have a shootout win. On paper, Vancouver would fancy their chances next week. And depending on results elsewhere for Austin, for Colorado, could mean Vancouver ends match day six in first in the West if things break their way. Vancouver will actually be hoping their opponent tonight, Minnesota, could do them a favor because Minnesota on Friday night visits Austin FC 2, their current first place team. Here's Khan. Out to Weya, who started the scoring tonight. Patrick Weya, all the way back in the 16th minute, his first of the season and his first start of the season. It's Morgan Olsen and Cooper Lejewski. Getting ready to come on now for Minnesota for a brief cameo here in the end. Just saw three different players shed the warm-up tops as well for Vancouver. Well, with this temperature, down in the mid-40s in the rain, there's no heat to speak of, obviously, to fatigue players. Maybe part of the reason why these two teams were able to wait so long before dipping into the benches. And even so, only used two changes each until now, where they're basically getting set for line changes. Thirty-two shots overall in this match, split right down the middle, 16-16. Vancouver eight on target, Minnesota six on target. All adding up to your 5-2 scoreline in favor of the home side. Ninetieth minute here at Swangard Stadium. Played ahead to Ba. Ba's there, saved by Emmings. Uche unable to clear it on the slide. Gave Ba the opportunity. And here come a grand total of five changes between both sides. Olsen, Lazuski come on. Weya comes off. As does Masanvi. Fourth official working overtime right now. Trying to get these boards going. That'll be all for Gio Aguilar on the Vancouver side. 
In comes Jivan Badwal. Malcolm Johnston in as well. And a to Mark Thomas. Malcolm Johnston was drafted 26 overall. In this year's MLS draft by NYCFC. They end up signing him, ends up in Vancouver. And the brother of Canadian men's national teamer, Alistair Johnston. Over three minutes tacked on. For those substitutions, it's nearly already two minutes through those three. And it's all a formality now. It has been for quite a while. At least it's felt that way. You got the sense after Vancouver took the 4-2 lead that they were on the way to a victory tonight. Levante Johnson with that goal back in the 70th minute. In a game of back and forth, finally a team snatched a two-goal lead. They turned it into a three-goal lead on the goal by Herdman in the 84th. And just a quirky little fun thing on this Vancouver side with the goals they've been scoring. They've played five games, and they've had five different goal totals. First game they scored two, next game they scored one, then they scored four, then three, now five. Five games, five different goal totals for the Whitecaps and 16 through five games. Three minutes have come and gone. Last chance here to add another one for Minnesota. And that'll do it. At the opening whistle tonight, Vancouver was in sixth place. At the final whistle, they've leapfrogged all the way to third place. An emphatic 5-2 victory and a big time response after suffering their first regulation loss of the season last week. League leaders with 15 total goals in five games. Dominant in this second half. The big reason why is your Adidas man of the match, Levante Johnson. Outstanding in this one. His first goal came in the first half of the back door on the fight from Ngando. And then in the second half, he added another one on the assist from Caicedo. He has three goals now on the season. This made it 4-2 and really sealed the deal for Vancouver Whitecaps too. All around strong showing for Ricardo Clark's unit. Now in third place and next week, They'll have a chance to climb up to first as they visit St. Louis and for Minnesota after starting the year with three straight regulation wins. It's now two straight regulation losses. And on Friday night, they go at it again against first place Austin FC2 on the road. Well, the rain never let up tonight at Swan Guard Stadium and neither did the goal scoring. Seven in all, 
Vancouver with five of those in a 5-2 victory. That'll do it for us, for the crew that makes this possible. I'm Joe Malva saying goodnight from Swan Guard Stadium, where the Vancouver Whitecaps blast their way into third place at the end of match day five of the Everlast Next Pro season. This copyrighted broadcast of MLS Next Pro may not be retransmitted, reproduced, or rebroadcasted without the express written consent of Major League Soccer.